This is Plane Maker tutorial 38 and Blender part 24. In this tutorial, I'll cover how we can go about creating lighting groups using the new script. So before what we had to go through uh, in order to make the lighting groups even hackable was we had to assign a group to them and that is no longer necessary. Now we can actually take whatever object we want to have independent lighting options and we can split it off from the rest of the mesh like using P and let's say I want to swap the, the daytime with the night texture on this one when I move this fader back and forth. So what I have here is a panel that has all these writing on it and I want that to light up when I move this floodlight knob left and right. Okay, so what we would do now, I'd encourage you to go to the X-Plane Object 8 format website. You go OBJ8 and the first hit is the Object 8 format. You'll notice that what I covered in my last tutorial is discussed down here towards the end, manipulation commands. Here we have the different cursor types look familiar from that Blender pop-up list here. And uh, there's a brief description of what all of these things do and this format is also, you'll notice that this format is very, very much in line with the way this was programmed here as an interface. Now, the reason I'm pulling this sheet up is because there's also information on lighting here. So let me just look for lighting. When we're starting to talk about attribute light level V1 and V2, value 1 and va value 2, and then the data ref. So this is a pretty new feature since uh, X-Plane version 9.3, and it allows you to change the brightness of the texture. And with this description in mind, uh, the script was programmed in order to handle this sort of thing in Blender so that you can save it together with a blend file. And as I alluded to already in tutorial 36, the way it works is to add a property here. Now what you have to do is you have to manually type in the property that we're dealing with and that is attribute light level. You can copy it from here if you want. Attribute light level and by default the script is, is written in such a way that it will go from 0 to 1 automatically. If you want to override that you can add properties but we'll get to that later. So basically the next thing we have to do is change the float to string so that we can enter a data ref in here. Now we have to match this data ref with the knob and the index, the array index that this knob controls. So in order to do that, we would have to go to the panel's brightness. We can copy it directly from here. That's exactly where the information is coming from. You paste it in here. And now we hit save and export. And now effectively, we've hooked up this panel to this knob in such a way that the lighting texture gets swapped cross-faded between the daytime and nighttime texture as we turn this knob. So that's really useful. I mean, all sorts of different things can be done with this type of, with this level of manipulator control. For example, you can have lights that turn on and off when you toggle them, and you can make your whole overhead panel behave very realistically, and it really adds a lot of functionality and uh, beauty to your cockpit. So that's pretty much all there is to it in this tutorial. We're probably going to be using this technique a lot as we uh, continue building this cockpit and finishing off this plane. I think what I should probably do next though is leave this cockpit alone for a while and start focusing more on some of the exterior stuff like uh, landing gear with shock absorbers, wing flex, fan blades, all those kinds of things. It's, it's really been uh, requested a lot and I've been spending a lot of time doing cockpit specific stuff which is actually the hardest part. I mean, if you if you finish a cockpit for a plane, that's like probably 40 or 50 percent of a plane. If some of the functionality in the cockpit is really hard to attain with X-Plane's default tools, and it might be necessary to program plugins in order to attain the functionality you're looking for, and that opens up a whole nother can of worms that I probably won't be able to get into in these tutorials because that involves hardcore programming, which I am not qualified to teach people how to do. So that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at in the cockpit for now. Again, this plane is, is uh, available for download. It's just receiving some updates and tweaks right now, so that should be published uh, in a fairly short while. And in the meantime, I'm hoping to just continue doing more tutorials and also publish some more FSX planes, which is really exciting. I'm really happy that uh, FSX developers are coming over to uh, take a look at what X-Plane has to offer. So anyway, that's all for today, and I hope you have a good time playing with these uh, with these lit textures. It's actually a pretty exciting feature uh, that that script adds.